Now, the rest of the story. Much of our greatest and most eloquent American literature is comprised of the words of pre-Civil War abolitionists. Wendell Phillips, James Russell Lowell, Henry Ward Beecher, Harriet Beecher Stowe, their legacy we all know. But you are about to hear from the other side. A series of quotes. One statement was made by a renowned lawyer, another by an esteemed orator, yet another by an aspiring state senator, and so on. There's even an excerpt from the inaugural address of a one-time President of the United States. Part of the significance of these public utterances, these enthusiastic endorsements of white supremacy, is the widespread bigotry they not only reflected, but inflamed. I mean, each was intentionally injected into a specific charged atmosphere during generally volatile times. And despite the facade of respectability behind which the speaker in each case stood... The rhetoric of racism was repeated again and again. Quote, The black man is not my equal in many respects, certainly not in color, perhaps not in moral or intellectual endowment. Quote, There is a natural disgust in the minds of nearly all white people to the idea of an indiscriminate amalgamation of the white and black races. A separation of the races is the only perfect preventative of amalgamation. But as an immediate separation is impossible, the next best thing is to keep them apart where they are not already together. Quote, There are white men enough to marry all the white women, and enough black men to marry all the black women, and in God's name let them be so married. Quote, I give the most solemn pledge that I will to the very last stand by the law of this state which forbids the marrying of white people with Negroes. Quote, I am in favor of the race to which I belong, having the superior position. Quote, I am not nor ever have been in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races. I am not nor ever have been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor of qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. Quote, I have no purpose, directly or indirectly, to interfere with the institution of slavery. I believe I have no lawful right to do so, and I have no inclination to do so. End quote. The remarks I have just recited were not the ravings of revolutionaries or self-interested slave masters. Each was written or spoken by an American statesman and or an attorney and or a citizen of some repute. And as surely as history can be distorted by historians, so any man's out-of-context utterances are less significant than the sum total of his life. It is sufficient to complete the record of that most agonizing era in our nation's history, to include without evaluation those precise quotations, all of them, all of them, from the pen or the lips of the same lawyer. The same statesmen, all of them public statements, by Abraham Lincoln. Now, you know the rest of the story.